D-Lab on the bench today. We've got a Dynakit Mark IV EL34 based amplifier. Came in the shop dead and pretty ratty looking. Let me show you what we got. So here's the Mark IV. Not in too bad a condition. You can see a little bit of spot rust on the chassis. Take the top off. And immediately, you see we got a blasted tube here. Lost his vacuum. The board looks intact, but it still has those old original Black Beauty caps. And over here, look at there. That's a real Dynaco tube right there, guys. But I bet you it's no good. So here we are, bottom side. And remember, this is the Dyna kit, not a Dynaco factory built. So, yes, this was a kit. And not exactly wired to my likings, but it's operational. Now, you'll see right here. There's two new capacitors in there. I put those in immediately because when I opened it up, I saw these old snozoramuses, okay? First thing you want to do, especially in that negative bias circuit, get those caps out. Don't turn on the amp if you see these old monsters in there. Get fresh in to begin with. So the first thing I do with amps that are in unknown condition is remove all the tubes and bring it up on a variac, okay? Variac is a very valuable piece of equipment to have in your lab. It will save you a lot of smoke and fire, all right? So right now, I'm hooked on the high voltage leads. You can see we've got three volts sitting there. That's a good sign, right? So I'm gonna bring up the variac. And yeah, there's a the high voltage. I'm not gonna bring it up all the way. I'm just trying to make sure the transformer is good. Let's check the filaments. Same thing, here's the five volt line which goes to the rectum fire tube. You can see that's alive. Now let's check the six volt filament line. So I'm on the filament line going to the first EL34. Same deal, bring up the Variac. Yep, she's live. So I can assume the power transformer is okay. I do not see any current reading on the Variac, which means there's probably no leakage to ground on that transformer. So as I stated earlier, I already put in some fresh negative bias filter caps, all right? So next we're going to take a look at that and make sure that that negative bias is working. Because if it's not, we're going to stop right here and investigate why. Because if you don't do that, you're going to eat your output tubes, all right? So here's the variac coming up. You can see we've got negative bias. That's a good thing. Next step, let's check the high voltage. So at this point, I've reinstalled the rectifier tube. The output tubes and the preamp tube are still out, okay? This is a 25K resistor, 20 water, that I have in parallel across the filter cap. And I got the old meteoroid looking at the high voltage. I'm gonna bring up the variac. I'm not gonna bring it up all the way. We'll wait for that tube to heat up and hopefully see some high voltage on this meter. Come on, high voltage. Look at there, here we go. So that's charging the filter cap. I'm not going to let it go up all the way. I just want to make sure it's there. So now the variax all the way down, and that resistor is discharging the high voltage. So you can see I still don't have the output tubes in. Right here is that bias pot. All right. I'm going to bring up the variac until I see voltage on that meter. Okay, and that's a negative bias. And I'm going to take this pot. And I want to set it at the maximum negative voltage, right? So if we go all the way clockwise, you can see she goes down. In this case, counterclockwise, that's maximum negative bias. And the reason I'm going to do that is I don't want to put in my output tubes and not have enough negative bias to hold them babies down so they don't go up in flames, right? All right, next step, let's get the output tubes in. All right, it's time to take a look at that bias. So I got my meter right set up into the convenient bias test point, which they're looking for approximately 1.56 volts, okay? I have a shorting plug on the input to eliminate any chance of noise getting in here and messing with me. And then this lead goes over here to the D-Lab audio test set, which provides a load. We still got the variac in line, so let's bring it up slow and see what we get. So for the initial test, I've got the variac at around 75 volts input. I'm just doing that once again to 
to see if the bias tries to set. So if it does, we should start seeing some DC voltage right here. Now here she comes. Remember, the maximum voltage that we want to see is 1.56 volts. Anything over that could be doomsday for those output tubes. All right, she came up all right. So now I got the old AC cord and plugged him in direct. Let this thing come up at full voltage. Watch that bias. Should be coming up here pretty quick. There it goes. Remember, maximum 1.56 volts. Remember, I have the negative bias all the way up. So it should not even get close to 1.56 volts if the adjustments are proper. So here we are hovering. And that should stabilize. But it's not. It's continuing to climb. That's okay. I'm going to let it sit here and do this for a little bit. I'm going to watch that voltage. Now most guys will say, well, I'll just get in here and I'll just crank her up till I get my 1.56. Right? Here she comes. I can adjust it. And a lot of guys will set that and say, man, I'm golden. Hook the amp up, start playing it. The next thing you know, flames are coming out of it, right? So I always monitor it. So far, she's looking pretty stable. I've been monitoring this for a while, and this voltage is steadily creeping up. Okay, I had it at 1.5. Now it's almost 1.6. So I notice that, and I tweak her back down. Okay, and then it'll start creeping back up. See it? That's a sure sign that these caps, those black beauties, are leaking and throwing the bias off to the tubes. So I routinely change these out, but I wanted to show you the symptoms before I did it. So you can see we're still going up. That shouldn't be happening. There's no signal applied. This should be stable as can be, and it's not. It's also dancing around, another sure sign of leakage. As long as we're under the 1.5, we're not going to burn up our tubes. But in this case, this one's slow, right? But a lot of times, these things will take off, and next thing you know, these guys are turning cherry red, and then it's too late. So, I'm going to swap out these caps, and we're going to recheck this bias. So in case you've never read about these black caps, their nicknames are black beauties. A lot of times when they fail, you'll see a crack down the plastic and this oil will ooze out of them, right? I don't ever let these amps get to that point. I put in some nice, fresh sprags. And we're gonna change all three. I'm not gonna fool around, they're coming out. It'll cost you like a dollar to do that. So before we swap out the cap, Make absolutely sure that AC cord is not plugged in. And also, take a meter and check your power supply and make sure she's discharged so you don't get a surprise, okay? Which I've already done. So here's the first cap. Should be able to get underneath of here. Find the leads coming in. Take my little trusty soldering iron in there. Bam! There she goes. So let's lift these out and get the new ones in. All right, so the new caps are installed. I've powered the amp back up. Now look at my bias voltage. Remember, it was like 1.5 volts. I have not touched the bias adjustment. Now look at it, about 0.6 volts. So those caps were definitely influencing the bias, okay? So now I'm gonna bring her up. Bring these guys to life. I'm not gonna go full current. We'll just say 1.2, how's that sound? And let's see if that's stable. I'm gonna let it sit here and bake. So while I'm monitoring the bias, I got the brainy idea. Let's see if we got any leakage through these caps, the old ones, right? 
I've been watching it on the meter. She's been dancing all around from about 12 meg down to 7 meg, whereas the other one shows pretty much open over 20 meg. So this guy was probably the main troublemaker. And as you can see, our bias is hanging in there like a champ. So I'll let her bake, and then let's put an audio generator on it and look at the sine wave on the old oscillating television. Okay, powering up the amp. I have an audio generator over there. Still hooked to the D-Lab audio test set. Got the oscilloscope down below. That's about where I left the bias. I actually tweaked it to about 1.4 volts for the test. So she's coming up fine. This is my level adjust, simulating like your preamp. Okay. And now let's swing over here. Look at the watt meter. Got some output. Let's look at the sine wave. Looks good. Nice and clean. I think we got us a winner here. Now we can go to the next higher setting so we can drive it harder. Let's watch that watt meter again. Boom. Okay. Let's look at that sine wave. Scowls out. And I can even hear it. Listen to the tubes over here. They're singing. She's working good. So I'm going to continue to bake this. You can see there's some cleanup required here on the board. But all in all, a huge success. The Dynaco lives again. So here are the fallen soldiers from the Dynakit Mark IV. A couple bad tubes, a few bad caps. Except for the price of the tubes, this was a fairly inexpensive repair. Well, there you have it. It doesn't get any better than that. This isn't staged, people. I'm showing you what's going on as I'm doing it. This old Dynaco sprang back to life. Should be good for another 50 years. So I hope this information was good for you in case you run across one of these amps. My best advice, take your time, be cautious, pay attention to what's going on with it. Just don't fire it up and walk away or it's going to be a landmine. Hope you enjoyed the video.